a tawny frogmouth from Australia. A lot of people think that she's an owl, but she's not. She's actually part of the songbird family. She has a lot of similarities with an owl because she has camouflage. The feathers make her camouflage with her environment. But if you take a look at her mouth, she has a wide mouth that looks like a frog, which is why she has the name frog mouth. If she opens it up, it's kind of yellow inside. One thing about songbirds and difference of bird of prey and raptors is that she does not have a strong beak made for ripping or tearing and her feet are not very strong either. We don't have to use a glove with them. She actually tenderizes her food and hits it on a tree branch until it's nice and soft and swallows it whole. Born in captivity, and she's one of the older tawny frogmouths in captivity. She is in her 20s. One of the characteristics of Sydney is that she does blend in with her environment, and they do something called branching. So if they're threatened or they'd like to blend in, they will sleep themselves up and they actually look like part of the tree. You notice she blends in very well, just like an owl. She does not like parrots. Whenever she sees a parrot, she makes a vocalization and she strains her body up nice and tight. She's kind of got it pretty cush. It's like at the Hilton. She has a clean enclosure. She's got food all the time, she gets showers, she loves to bathe, and she loves the interaction with all the other animals that are around our department. Now you know Sydney, our tawny frogmouth. Meet Johnny, he is a Patagonian Mara. He is also known as a Patagonian Cabby. Sue Tacho and I'm an Animal Ambassador Resources Keeper 1 at the Phoenix Zoo. I'm his main keeper. Five out of seven days a week I take care of him. Don't eat random stuff. Johnny Longlegs is actually part of the rodent family, so he's related to rats and porcupines. A lot of people get them confused though because of his long legs. They are a lot like hoofstock in that way, but he is still a rodent. When you're talking about comparisons to deer, his legs are very, very close to hoofstock legs, but that's the only thing that really connects him in that way. Everything else is rodent. that he is different is going to be his legs. Rodents don't typically have legs like this. So he has a lot of different locomotion than other rodents. So he's typically going to run and jump and kind of just like have a good time and go really, really fast. So a thing that makes him really different from the other rodents. Johnny, are you okay? He'll run around and he jumps. Uh, it's kind of a normal Patagonian Mara thing. They have special legs that work a lot like hoofstock animals, so they do run and jump, and they do travel a lot differently than other rodents. That's the typical sound that he makes. It's mostly like him being excited and pumped. Uh, he doesn't really make that sound a whole lot unless he's really interested in something. Uh, sometimes, though, I will be doing something and he will make that sound kind of to get my attention, but mostly he just makes it when he's really excited. Johnny is full grown since he is eight years old. Um, typically, they're gonna get probably about two feet tall and like three feet long, how big Johnny is. And now you know Johnny Longley. He's one of many cute animals of Arizona here at the Phoenix Zoo. Our hair is so 
Texas hack. My name is Tara Troy. I'm Ambassador Animal Resources Keeper here at the Phoenix Zoo. are native all over North America. We have them all over here at Papago Park and at the Phoenix Zoo. You can look for them by seeing the bright white tips on their tails. Birds of prey are very intimidating birds. They have those long talons and those sharp beaks, but they are so important for our environment. They keep our rodent populations in check. They really don't bother people very much. They just kind of like to hang out in the sky and do their thing. Terrace's hawks are diurnal birds, meaning they hunt during the daytime. They actually have these built-in sunglasses right above their eyes. They're very good hunters, and Harris's hawks are actually one of the only species of raptors known to hunt cooperatively. Some people call them the wolves of the sky. So they'll actually hunt together in larger packs of birds so that they can take down bigger prey. Merlin is a true carnivore in the wild. They hunt all sorts of small mammals, rats, rabbits, mice, and Merlin, what brought her here, she is a rescue bird. So Merlin has the bottom half of her beak missing. It had to be amputated due to some wire wrapped around it when she was found in the wild. So she was not releasable, but luckily she came to live here with us and she's been here almost 25 years now. She can catch food really well, but she cannot eat it. We hand feed her every single day. So we really get to know her and she gets to know us. She has a lot of personality. She likes to tell us uh, when it's time for a shower. Merlin knows what time it is. She's very good at telling time and when it's feed time. I love teaching the public and reaching out to so many guests that I get to see and teach them about the importance of all our animals in our natural world. And you know Merlin, she's one of the many cute animals of Arizona.